Well, Ron Roberts is out as Auburn's defensive coordinator. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Happy Charlie Tuesday to those who celebrate. We're joined by Auburn message board legend, Charlie Five, also the host of the Top Button Podcast. It's amazing, Charlie Five, on a day where Auburn landed two guys via the transfer portal, as well as Keontae Scott announcing that he's coming back. Those aren't the biggest stories. The biggest story is Auburn needs a defensive coordinator now. Ron Roberts is taking a job at Florida, be a linebacker's coach, it seems like. And the Tigers, uh, the Tigers need a new defensive coordinator, despite I think Ron Roberts' scheme was fine, but it seems like it was a little deeper than that. It seems like it was more of a cultural thing. Um, and and this was a type of situation that um kind of came up and was a talking point about halfway through the season. Yeah, it's it's very rare that uh in the college coaching professions, guys will be vocal that like, hey, I can't work with this guy. Like I'll just if you're on staff, I can't work with this guy so bad that I'll just step off field. And that's what happened with uh Wesley McGriff. I never really thought I'd be happy to see a coach go that I thought did a pretty good job. So uh yeah. um it's it's kind of a weird feeling. You know, it's like, okay, do we I hope we know what we're doing here because you know, the defense was not the problem at all last year. Uh, as a matter of fact, they kept us in several games that we probably several. shouldn't have been. But um, again, like you said, culture is, it seemed to seem to be an issue. Um, I think it played a big role in a couple of different players, uh, pops possibly Keontae Scott, uh, which we'll talk about uh, in a, in a minute. But but yeah, um, weird. After one year, you're 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 done with two coordinators, and you're seemingly. Uh, I don't know start, if starting over is the right term, but you're you're definitely moving on quickly. Uh, and well, the, the reset button on the offensive side makes a lot more sense. Like getting rid of Philip Montgomery. It's okay. Thank you, Philip Montgomery. You did your best for a year. Now it's Hugh Freeze's offense. He needed to focus right. on other things. He needed some help on the offensive side of the ball. You got to think with them not being as far behind in the 2025 class that Hugh Freeze will be essentially the offensive coordinator. That's what we all hope. And you made the comment a week ago when we were talking about quarterbacks. You're like, the biggest thing would be Hugh Freeze just calling plays. Uh, I think that's more important than any kind of transfer quarterback that we've talked about Sure. over the last few weeks. And, and I agree with you. So the defense is different, though, because it kind of felt like Ron Roberts was the head coach of the defense, right? which is not unusual where you see that, where an offensive-minded head coach, they trust the defensive coordinator to do a lot of the things. For the most part, I think Ron Roberts did a good job as far as preparing the uh, teams. Unless it's third in a long way or fourth in a long way, they were really, really solid. So what do they do and where do they go? Do they promote from within? Do they do they hit up and uh, a few different names have kind of popped up and Charlie Five I'd love your insight on, on that but it is different like they're resetting on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball it almost feels like Hugh Freeze is like thanks Philip get out of here now yeah exactly exactly so defense uh, one good thing is I, I know it's not been announced his official capacity yet is you have a Charles Kelly who's got play calling right. experience so maybe you're, it's not as uh, necessary to have to go find someone with a long, uh, I guess, a long history of successful calling. I mean, calling plays as a defensive coordinator. That'd be great. Obviously, that'd be great. But it kind of seems like they may want to go in, on an, another recruiting, uh, like a, another recruiting route, so to speak. Uh, and I think um, they, it's already come out. I think Justin Hokins has talked about it. Several different places have talked about it. Uh, Chris Kiffin from the NFL. Yes, it's Lane Kiffin's brother. Um, it's kind of Hugh's boy. Uh, he kind of got him started in college football as a position coach at Arkansas State. I think he went with him to Ole Miss, tried to hire him back last year. He's with the Houston Texans right now as a linebacker coach. He's a defensive line uh, edge rusher specialist, um, and he's known just to be an absolute monster on the recruiting trail. And Yeah, if, you, if this drags on a little bit, we may just kind of wait and see what happens after the Texans are eliminated from postseason play. But right now, they 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 may lend. Yeah. Props to props to to Stroud for getting them in there. But if it takes a minute 
that's probably why. But if it's not him, who do you think it is? Well, I mean, your ultimate fallback will be Charles Kelly, but there, you know, there's, I mean, they had some, they had some talks with Zach Arnett early uh, in the defensive sure. in the search last year. So you got to think his name's going to pop up. Um, I think I saw um, a, a guy from on three, uh, Jay Head, taught, say Jeff Collins, even though he took the uh, North Carolina job, hasn't missed, maybe it's not necessarily official yet, he hadn't signed contract stuff. He could come back, uh, he could be an option. He, another real, really good defensive coordinator. There'll be some options. There'll be some options. I th- but I think they. It seems like it seems like Hugh really wants to get his get his guy in here this time. I think I think he's going to do whatever he can, it, even if we have to be patient. Um, I think that that's it's not going to get far past maybe those one or two guys. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's kind of pointing the same direction. Same on the offensive side of the ball. It seems like it's the same two or three guys, which is good. I think all of those candidates make a ton of sense. I did love Ron Roberts' scheme. Like, I am going to miss that scheme. It was a lot of fun with with different types of pressures, and we'll see what the next defensive coordinator does. Certainly, a lot of people do that in today's game, but Ron Roberts was kind of the godfather of that style of defense, and it was cool to see that at Auburn, but they're bringing in more and more pass rushers, at least young pass rushers, and they're going to have to play a lot of young guys. And so whoever is the defensive coordinator, some of these young guys are going to need help schematically just because a lot of these guys in the front seven, specifically on the defensive line and on the at the edge, they haven't played a ton of college football, assuming assuming they don't land some transfer portal guys between now and the start of the season. Yeah, and that those positions don't seem like ones where there's really a lot of even options. Yeah, the offers aren't going out at defensive yeah. end or, or jack or anything like that. Yeah. But but then it's not always always a bad thing. Uh, it's not always a bad yeah. thing. It's it, you know, kind of trial by fire, get some guys in there. And, um, you know, that may have been what helped you get some of these guys. So Good point. Uh, anxious to see how uh, how this whole search and, and then how the, the, the I guess, the duties are shared, uh, at how that whole thing falls into place. So um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Coaching searches are fun, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's not ideal to be searching for coaches every offseason, but they're fun and, and, and regardless. Yeah, and both of these made sense, and I think for different reasons. Like I like both of these coaches, but the fit wasn't perfect, and some of that was schematically. Some of that was from a personality standpoint, yeah. exactly. And I don't think Philip Montgomery or Ron Roberts are bad coaches. I just don't think it worked here, and that's okay because they both made sense when Hugh Freeze hired them, and they moved on because it wasn't an ideal fit, and now Hugh Freeze is able to – to go out and get guys that he trusts. And, and I think that's going to be a huge part of all of us. Yeah. And another big thing is I think Ron Roberts had sort of like one of those offsetting contracts. So it, him getting immediately hired is good for buyout purposes and things like that, because yeah. I don't think Montgomery uh, had one. I think we pretty much owe him his whole buyout. So uh, him going and finding another job. That's another thing like that that speaks a lot to to Ron for I mean hey I don't want to have two firings on my resume back to back so even if I got to take a step down it's the best for my career he looks like an old curmudgeon but he's actually only like fifty six or fifty seven years old so he's still got you know several years left so having a boom firing from Baylor and a firing from Auburn so it would would not necessarily be great so kudos for him for just you know seeing the writing on the wall and and finding finding a gig and and. Uh, you know, he got picked up pretty quick. Yeah, good for him. And we'll see what he does at Florida. We'll see. We'll see. Keontae Scott is back. What does that mean? We'll discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. I know we come to sports and talk about sports to escape from the crazy realities of real life, but let's just talk for a minute about preparing for real life. According to the FDA, Pharmacies are running out of antibiotics right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That can be scary. And you want to feel prepared in a situation like this. Well, the Jace case can help you do that at Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, skin infections, a bunch of stuff. It could happen to anybody. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed like a board, uh, by a board-certified physician, 
and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. That's at jacemedical.com. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at Alumni Hall. Alumni Hall is the best place to buy all of your Auburn swag. We are fully in basketball season, folks. And if you don't have your basketball swag, whether you're going to Auburn basketball watch parties or going to Neville Arena to pull uh, pull for the Tigers, or if you're going to a away game, you want to make sure you have the best Auburn gear you can buy, and that's at alumnihall.com. And baseball's right around the corner, too. They'll have baseball stuff up, I'm sure, in the coming weeks, which is very, very exciting. Alumni Hall, they've got three physical locations in Auburn, Opelika, and Huntsville. And if you can't make it to any of those great physical locations, go loc- locations, go to alumnihall.com. And uh, they will take care of you there. Thank you so much to Alumni Hall for sponsoring this show. It's a Charlie Tuesday, Auburn message board legend and the host of the Top Button Podcast. Charlie Five hanging out with us. Keontae Scott, it was weird. It was weird. Uh, You know, this report comes out from a national 247 guy, I believe, saying, hey, he's expecting to enter the portal. And then after that, there was a lot of kind of conflicting reports and you have 48 to 72 hours if you're the school to kind of hold on to the papers do a last ditch effort before you officially submit them into the portal and there are some people saying that well we're in that window and there were some people saying well he, he didn't do that like he's not in the portal this was after those 72 hours came out so it was just a lot of you know different opinions and different thoughts about this ron roberts leaves hey guys i'm coming back Immediately. <laughs> All is good. Yeah. All is good. And, and I think that goes back to the personality um, part of why Ron Roberts is no longer here. Um, There's a lot of smoke about Kay and Lee potentially entering the portal as well. And I think it's safe to read between the lines to say that all of these things are related. So how huge is it that Auburn did not lose Kay and Lee and Keontae Scott? I mean that's that, that's huge. I, that, again, those are two those are two starters that could start it. Uh, I would think they could start it just about anywhere in the SEC. So yeah, they're very uh, good. Yeah. It's big. The timing is funny. Again, like we said, within minutes of the Ron Roberts deal, Keontae Scott um, uh, says he's coming back, or he was never leaving, or or whatever. I don't know. I think the biggest thing we learned is nobody has any idea about how the transfer portal when you enter and when you're announced works. <laughs> we have no idea. We have no idea the window of, of like after a bowl game because the math just didn't work. It, it, we don't have, we have no idea how it works. Yeah. I don't understand up. how he was able to enter the portal at that time. So I, I don't know. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's back. And that's all that really matters. And then there was growing concern uh, I guess this was yesterday morning. Dylan Wade, who put out a bunch of like broken heart emojis after Philip Montgomery left, which of <laughs> course was his former coach at his previous school. Uh, he came into the live chat here, locked on Auburn when Daryl and I were live, kind of breaking down the news, and he like is put bombing in the chat a bunch of like broken heart emojis, and he goes to Twitter and does the same thing. Yesterday morning, he he posts like the two fingers, like the. A lot of people are like deuces, peace, wow. you know. It's like, oh my goodness, that's important. Dylan Wade, your uh, left tackle from a year ago is very, very important. So what do you do there? And then he announced afterwards um, that he's coming back. So, I mean, it was a really good day for Auburn. We haven't even gotten to the transfers that are coming in yet. But just like keeping your own talent is huge. Like that is such a big part of this. And Auburn didn't really lose anybody. They are like, dang it, that really stinks. Like, yeah. Player that Auburn lost in the portal. I, I don't even really know who he lost in the portal, if I'm being honest. I mean, I know there was a couple of receivers, but like there again, two years, I feel like two years in a row where you didn't really lose um any mega contributor that you're that you're super fired that you'd be super sad about losing. Keontae Scott, I really thought he was gone. That would and that would be the first one where you're like, dang, how did that how did that happen? But yeah, and then obviously then Jason Jones um return, uh, putting yeah, his thing out that he's coming, coming back. back. So right. there was a lot of good there was a lot of good Auburn vibes today. And like you said, we haven't even gotten to the portal commits yet. So um the timing and everything, I w- I don't know if it's orchestrated. We felt like we needed some good news because over the weekend, um, you know, you had the whole 
the whole Keontae Scott saga. You lost Philip Montgomery, which some people were happy. So I'm, I'm sure some people were like, oh, I don't know how to feel about this. And then I think most people were okay. I, I think the Auburn fan base, it, it takes a lot for the Auburn fan base to be unified on something football related. Basketball, baseball, they seem to be good, but football, there's always just this, just so polarizing, I guess, which is fine. But I think everybody wants Hugh Freeze to call plays in 2024. Exactly. I think exactly. everybody wants that. Even like the Hugh Freeze haters, it's like, let's see what you got. And I think the Hugh Freeze supporters are like, yes, come on. This is one of the big reasons why you're brought in and why you've been so successful is your ability to call plays. So I think everybody's on the same page with that. So I think that's huge for Auburn moving forward. All right, let's talk about one of the transfers. Trill Carter, the, yeah. the, the 6'2", 300-ish pound defensive tackle from Texas. He was a rotational guy at Texas, but I really like his game. I think he's going to be an early down player, especially with, there seems to be more chatter of, of just kind of putting all of your best pass rushers on the field. And if Keldrick Falk scoots in on some snaps, especially on third down, which I think makes a, a whole lot of sense. Um, I could see Trill Carter playing on early downs consistently in 2024. I don't know if he necessarily starts Charlie five, but I, I like this addition. Defensive line is my biggest concern on this roster right now. Mm -hmm. Trill Carter does make me feel a little bit better about it. Sure. Sure. It's another, another body, a guy that's got a lot of experience. I think he, I think he actually played a good bit in the, uh, I think in the playoff game and had some big plays against Washington, the, the little bit, um, that he they played were, guess, 23 snaps in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I feel like the goal, like we've always, we want to be able to have someone that can play play in the middle and free Jason Jones up to be able to not just have to be a nose tackle. Um, and I think this gives the flexibility of them to do both. Like I think both yeah. of these guys could play things and, and flip-flop in the same like series. So like you could have – you could you could have a, a little bit more dynamic there uh, in, in the middle, and then you obviously you got that just helps free up guys like Keldrick Falk, maybe some of the young guys that can play pass rushers. So it's good. You got Gage Keys, you got um, Trill Carter. Um, I think they uh, they'd love to add one more. Uh, I don't I don't know if that's going to be you know an Isaiah Rikes or if there's you know somebody else that may pop a little bit later. But um, but yeah, I, it's not not ter not terrible. You got you know, it's another Lawrence Johnson. You know, you had a guy like this, like Lawrence Johnson last year, and Lawrence had some really good. I feel like I, he had. Some I really think Trill Carter is is better than Lawrence yeah. Johnson. So, so there you go, there you go. He played and he played some pretty good snaps, and possibly you have a, a guy with a little bit higher end. Uh, so that's that's a good add. Does Trill Carter have more playoff snaps than anybody in Auburn football history? <laughs> it would have yes. I mean, I'm trying to think. Yes, I'm trying to think who else Consider they've gotten in the portal over the last few years. It would have been a playoff team. Yeah, I think so. I think so. There is no, there's no thinking. It is. Wow. Is Trill <laughs> Carter the best Auburn football player of all time? I don't know. He's got the best name, Trill. Trill the. Thrill. I don't know if he's got the best name, but it's pretty. I love good. that name. I like that. I've never heard that one before. That's a Trill. good. Got to be short for something, right? I don't know what it would be short for. I'm Trillium. I don't know. Trillium Carter. <laughs> I love what else it. Gonna be? What good? I love it. Yeah, and he played he played snaps at defensive tackle and at nose guard. So yeah, like you said, he can do both. So we'll see what that looks like. And Texas was a very good pass rushing team. I was talking with Jonathan Davis, the host of Locked On Longhorns, about him. Um he thinks he, he thinks it's gonna be a good fit. So Texas liked Trill Carter, which is normally a good thing when the yeah, when the team will still talk good about the player that left them. So that I thought that was pretty. Interesting, too. I'm going to try to get him on at some point to talk more about Trill Carter as well. I just want to say Trill Carter over and over and over again. And then and then when he graduates next year, we get to say the Trill is gone. A little, yeah. Steve Ray Vaughan, a little Steve Ray Vaughan uh, reference there. He may not, you may be too young for that. Yeah, I'm 12, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. All right, Auburn, uh, Auburn landed another uh, guy on the offensive side of the ball that can help. Um, that can possibly help in 2024, but I definitely think can help in 2025. We discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The NFL regular season is uh, is done, but playoffs are here and nobody 
loves the playoffs more than FanDuel. Head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. New customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you have to do is place a $5 bet, no matter what you get that. FanDuel right now, Charlie Five, I'm going to bring you back for this. I'm going to bring you back on the screen for this. FanDuel right now, you can bet Peyton Thorne plus 25,000 for the Heisman. Plus 25,000. 25, what do you have to lose? Put a what dollar. What do you have on. to lose? What's minimum bet? Because <laughs> because you're still going to win a, a crap ton a crap ton of money. You can't. I mean, put ten bucks on it. I mean, it's wild that the odds went that deep. Yeah, twenty five thousand. So above, <laughs> right above uh, Jaden Rashada. So there you go. Wow. Also, Auburn is at plus twelve thousand. To win the national championship next year. Value. Do you believe in the Auburn Tigers? Then go to FanDuel right now. And reward yourself. Yep, that's right. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL and the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, Auburn adds Rico Walker, the tight end from Maryland. Yeah, joke's on you, Maryland. You may have won the Music City Bowl, but we got Jacques Rico Ward. Walker. Yeah, you may have. What would we now. rather have? Would you rather have a Music City Bowl championship or a potentially dynamic tight end that could be Rivaldo's replacement in two years? Which one would you rather have? Which one would you I'm, rather have? I know what I'm choosing, and that's a boatload of Rico. Let's go, baby. <laughs> no, I mean, think about it. Think about it. We lose our whole tight end room. We lose our whole tight end room, and you get a. 6'4", 245, 250-pound dude that was actually recruited as like an edge linebacker, like a very – I love that. Very I big, love that. Very big freak athlete that, um, you know, can hopefully be a, be a blocker and a receiver, and he gets to watch and learn from uh, Rivaldo. Um, I mean, this is going to be – your position, and they he basically even said, you know, but I can maybe do a little bit more block. <laughs> I can do it, be a, maybe be a little bit better blocker, so I can do a little bit of both. Um, that's a that, and he's he's got three years left. I mean, sign I'm me in. up, sign me I'm up. In. It's it's not maybe not a huge factor for twenty twenty four, but man, you yeah. need that guy f- moving forward. So that's a that's a big ad. Yeah. Auburn is going to lose Luke Deal, Brandon Frazier, and Rivaldo Fairweather after this yeah. upcoming season. And so right now, the only guys that you have on scholarship are Mike O'Reilly and Rico Walker. And they've got Ryan G committed in the yeah. 20, is he a 2025 kid? 2025. Yeah, 20, yes, he's in this yeah. next upcoming class. Because we have so many committed in 25 and 26 because we're recruiting now. That's wild. Yeah, but we're doing but it. yeah, and so so I guess... I guess going into that year, the year after all those guys leave, you would have Ryan G also a part of that room. He'd be like the young gun in that room. So tight end may be a position that you go after in the portal again um, a year from now. But still, I I love the addition of Rico Walker. I I don't really, there's no downside to this and you need bodies in the room. And I think he's pretty solid. I, I think you can see the clear path to potential upside here. So. I think that's great. Big fan. Big fan. Love it. Take that, Maryland. Take that. All right. Your general feel of everything moving forward regarding, I mean, because like you said, the morale seemed low over the weekend. And then yesterday is like, okay, a lot of really good things happened. And I'm counting Ron Roberts moving on as a good thing just because it seemed like something that needed to happen uh, for Hugh Freeze to get more of the guys that he wanted in. Do you expect things to continue to trend up? Because we're all kind of looking at it. Okay, tomorrow, spring classes start. And that's yeah. when you, in theory, need to be enrolled and all of that. And the transfer portal class appears to be about set. But do you do you anticipate anything else happening, Charlie Five? I, I mean, you have until January 17th is the last day to enroll. So I still think oh, okay. I still think there's a couple more guys that they they want to add. I think, you know, Percy Lewis is offensive tackle that, you know, they're that could pop at any moment that they're trying really hard to battle against Arkansas. So the um, thing with Percy Lewis, though, it seems like he told everybody he was going to commit the day after his visit somewhere, either to Auburn or Arkansas, and he wasn't going to make an announcement. And mm-hmm. so it's like, is he committed right now to, to Auburn or Arkansas? Like, is he just going to pop up on the roster? Like, how is that going to happen? 
surely there i mean for the, the pr reasons they're gonna there's surely there's gonna be a university announcement i mean we we did that maybe for, i mean we did that for both want that? Uh, i mean we did that boat we did that for both guys today like we had a we had let them do their own commitment and then we did um we did our like university and that uh, announcement as well i think that'll still Who did we happen not, we didn't do that for um dorian Mausi, the duke linebacker he was I just kind of we well i th i still think i don't know that that was <laughs> i still i'm not 100 percent sure he meant to say that during the press <laughs> conference i'm not 100 percent sure that that was meant to happen i think that was just kind of that just kind of got out there. oh hugh is so honest at pressers i'm all I for know, it i know i'm all I know. for it I and then like the you know with Jackson the fifth they just they just put a graphic out. Yeah, the the university I think tweeted it just mm -hmm. without without right. any fanfare whatsoever oh. came out of yeah. nowhere. Right. No, I mean I think what we'll I mean there's still like I said I think they would like at least one more defensive lineman and the Percy Lewis and then I, I don't know what happens after that maybe a defense I think a, another defensive back there's a couple of guys you you can look at a couple of Alabama transfers in the portal that you know Charles Kelly's had. Um, connections to uh you could add one of those so there there I don't think the class is all the way done that'd be wild um but i it feels like it feels sort of like everybody has has had a sigh of relief i guess that these two these two stresses of like what to do on offense and defense are now over with are now over with so um I, that that's something that um i'm ex you know excited again to see the coaching search and then just see how uh, everything moves forward and then play calling duties and and uh, recruiting responsibilities and and the excitement that you get from ha having a new guy uh it's just uh um I, i'm 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 pumped for it i'm excited this calendar absolutely stinks for coaches as far as the season ends you got to recruit for signing day while the transfer portal windows open and then the window closes and you actually can like get rid of coaches and all that. It stinks for the coaches. Like it stinks for Hugh oh, freeze and awful. administration and all that. Like I, I do not envy him at all, but as a fan, like there's always stuff going. Cause as soon as all this so stuff gets action. settled, it's like, okay, we've got like four weeks till spring starts. Like this is going to be awesome. That's why we freak out when like there's not a portal commit like every single day because there's like so much happening. You know what I mean? There's so much happening, and then when you don't get a portal commit, you're like, "What? what the, the whole place is burned? Like burn it down? Like we're 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 we're, we're not? What do we do? We're not? We don't yeah, know what we're doing." Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a fun year and a fun off season just because I, I think I think Auburn's going to be better next year, and I think the schedule's easier than it was a year ago. And so, I mean, once we get this coaching staff solidified and then we'll see what happens on you know signing day with ryan williams and then it's like we look up and spring is here and then we'll have another transfer portal window and it's like okay the media days will be here we'll talk about texas and oklahoma coming to the league and then boom like this is going to be a good off season um for sure and, and maybe I mean, maybe auburn basketball will make a final four run because they look great so charlie five how can people check out everything that you've uh you've got going on Absolutely. Find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five and the Locked on Auburn Discord every single day or Tuesdays and Thursdays on the Top Button Podcast. Yeah, you can find the Top Button Podcast by just searching Top Button Podcast on your uh, your podcasting app or subscribe on the Auburn Daily YouTube page. Also subscribe here. Really appreciate it. Click that like button. It means a ton. And we'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.